So, uh, I was very recently on a date with a civilian chick. And that doesn't happen often. And I was talking to her about what I did for a living. And much of what I was talking about was the Marine Corps. At some point, in me fucking rambling on without even noticing if she was listening, she goes, wow, you're like really passionate about the Marine Corps. Like, why do you have that passion? I thought about it. Then I got into why I love the Marine Corps. You know, I haven't, I've been so busy hating the Marine Corps lately that I forgot why I love it so much. So I wanted to share with you what I shared with her. I said that that which excites you the most about being a Marine is the thought of going to war. I made a joke about that like a year ago when I, I was making fun of those who say that leading Marines is the best part of being a Marine. That the best part of being a Marine is fucking killing people. Uh, it was a joke, but I was dead fucking serious. <laughs> the warrior lifestyle, the real warrior lifestyle, embraces the thought of murdering his enemies. You know, there are different kinds of warriors. You got your, your humble warriors, your peaceful warriors, and, you know, your fucking, the warriors who are, are only there to defend, you know, like uh, police and shit. Halt. But the real warriors, they don't want to just defend. They want to go take a mace and swing it into somebody's fucking head. That is the kind of warrior that the Marine Corps encourages. That which gives you value as a warrior are your kills. That's fucking bad fucking ass. So I'm telling this civilian chick that, and she's looking at me like I'm a psychopath. She's right, but I just don't want her to be right. <clears throat> then I start getting to the history of the Marine Corps. You know, the Marines starting out as sharpshooters aboard Navy ships. Marine, or the, the U.S. Navy ship, pulls up next to, uh, well, no, it was the Brits, <laughs> pulls up next to another Navy ship. Maybe it's this fucking Spanish, because this fucking Spaniards are fucking fuck them so the ship pulls up and the marines run up the, the mast and then post up and they're the sharpshooters picking off the officers on the other ship so the cannons rocking the fucking boat the ocean and the wind is rocking the boat and these guys are hanging up there doing one of these Picking off other officers. It's the sickest fucking thing in the world. And then the 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 ships are coming closer together, and uh, they're getting ready to board, right? Boarding party. Well, the Marines, after they're picking off the other officers, are fucking racing down the ropes and climbing down the big wood mast to be the first ones to board the other fucking ship. Why? Because they wanted first fucking blood. How fucking sick is that? That's our fucking... That's how we were born. It's fucking nuts. And that bloodthirst, that desire to get the first kill and the most kills... That's the real reason that we've been so effective at war. I mean, prior to maneuver warfare, when we really just changed the game and blew everyone away, or I should say steamrolled them, prior to maneuver warfare, our tactics were pretty fucking on par with who we were fighting. So it wasn't our tactics that, that, that won us wars. It was that burning fucking desire, that bloodthirst, that made us have to murder all of them. That thought that exists in the soul of a warrior. I must murder 
all of my enemies. I will not stop until the ground before me is red with the blood of my enemy. That thought existing in every single infantryman, in every marine. That's why we win wars. It's, uh, it's an insane mindset that has made us successful with shitty weapons, shitty gear, shitty training. In Korea, a lot of those guys didn't even go to boot camp. They were sent straight to fucking Korea. How did those guys help win wars? It was because the mindset that was indoctrinated in them since the first time they ever heard of the Marine Corps, that mindset is why they won the war. Well, we didn't really win Korea, but that's why we fucking killed so many of them. That's, that's amazing. There's a quote in the Marine Corps Museum gives me chills just thinking about it, but seeing it almost brought me to tears. There's a lot of badass quotes in the museum. And I, I forget who it was by. It was by an army general. said, uh, the safest place in Korea was behind a platoon of Marines. Lord, how they could fight. That's the Marine Corps. In World War I, which was the first time uh, the Marines were used in conventional ground warfare. Prior to then, it was just all fucking on the seas and then storming all the, was the banana islands. It was all island campaigns. And, you know, the, the army didn't have any respect for the Marine Corps. They thought they were a bunch of fucking drunk, drunk, uh, you know, turbo sailors. So the army was like, fuck these guys. We don't, they're telling Congress we don't need them. And then finally at some point in World War I, they were like, okay, look, we need the fucking Marines. So whatever general was in charge of the line that was uh, in France defending against the Germans, um, I want to say Pugino line, the general in charge of that uh, knew that there was one battalion of the French or one regiment that was about to be overrun. The Germans were about to break the line. And he knows this is happening. And so this fucking asshole says, Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead now, put the Marines over there. <laughs> Just to, because fuck the Marines, right? Clearly that mentality has permeated down to the lowest ranks of the Marine Corps <laughs> since then to this day. So they send the Marines up there. The Marines show up, as the legend has it, in the backs of Jeeps laughing at the French soldiers who are retreating. They're laughing at him, calling him bitches. <laughs> Legend has it the Marines were hung over as they're pulling up into battle, just in a jolly mood. And, you know, the French are shot up and blown up and they're carrying each other and, you know, looking all pussy and shit. And the Marines are like, Later, bitches! <sighs> Tell your wife to make me a plate. Because she's not fucking you when I'm done saving your country. The Marines pull up into the fucking... Onto the line. And this is 5th and 6th Marines. Pull on the line. They get in the trench. Germans are advancing. And then, supposedly, as legend has it, Every Marine rifle put down a German soldier. <laughs> and the Germans stopped their advance. The whole, the whole uh, you know, first row of uh, obviously the platoon shitbags. Because I'm, I'm, I have to assume that's who they would put in the first row. <laughs> you know, all the guys uh, trying to skip out on working parties. Yeah, you get the f front row, buddy. <laughs> you got caught sleeping, front row. <clears throat> so uh, so it drops the, the German front row whole German advance halts Germans look around like oh my god what the fuck is happening here and then the officers blow the whistles and 
I don't know if the, the Germans said, follow me. I think they said, move forward. <laughs> yeah, only Marine lieutenants say, follow me, right? <laughs> then the Germans are pushing forward again. Every Marine rifle, pa drops another fucking, uh, another German. Then the Germans are like, holy shit, what's going on? And then the Marine officers fucking get up and say, you know, come on, man, you want to live forever? Or whatever the fuck they said. <laughs> Actually, this was the, this was the time when the, the French are retreating, and the the, the lieutenant, the lieutenant or captain says, "Retreat! Hell, we just got here." <laughs> I was two five. Um, I'm wearing this for because it's my dad's unit. But uh, in any case, uh, they've run and they're fucking, you know, bayoneting every fucking German out there with their gas masks on low crawl bayonet kills and shit that's this fucking sickest shit ever like that is our history as marines and as we carry ourselves through battles we have maintained through wars and battles we have maintained that same love it's not just desire, it's not just a thirst, it's a love for killing our enemies. It's a weird thing. But it's fucking sick. And we've carried that throughout these wars. You know, like, the fucking island hopping campaign of World War II. They had no food, no water. The Japanese kept poisoning all the, the leftover water on the island as the Japs were retreating. They, they literally had nothing. The Navy ships are getting fucked up, so they can't bring supplies in. What motivated them? It was the thought of killing their enemy. The fucking guys in Korea, you know, it's free. They're all, they got frostbite. They're missing fingers. Fucking picking up mortar rounds with nubs, or, may, or maybe the hand is still there, but it's dead. The hand doesn't work. You know what were the fucking mortarmen saying? Barely hanging. <laughs> Let me go grab another mortar. Barely hanging. Boom. Machine gunners, fucking fingers frostbitten. I mean, just think if we ever, if we ever have to fight China, they have technological capabilities that will just shut. Everything of ours down. Nothing's gonna work. Your fucking, your watch and your compass isn't gonna work. Definitely not your GPS. Our communication to our birds, to our close air support, and our artillery, even intra-unit communication will get fucked. So, how will we not only survive in that environment, but thrive in that environment? It's our ethos. It is our burning desire to murder our enemies. That is what will get us through a war with China, through a war without our electronics and without good communication. It will be our desire to kill. Can't forget that. And I, I talked to guys, I was very fortunate when I came up in the Marine Corps, I was raised by guys who were in the invasion and fucking, you know, Nazaria, Baghdad, the Korangal, Ramadi, 2-4 Ramadi was my platoon sergeant. Come on. One of my squad leaders was fucking um, Phantom Fury. My, my other platoon sergeant um, was the invasion. And then I think Fallujah won. You know, like, these are the warriors who, who raised me, who influenced me as a Marine. And... You know, being be just being in their presence was fucking amazing because they were real warriors. They weren't, you know, just really well disciplined Marines who, um, you know, did their MCIs. No, fucking one of them, two of them, had terrible discipline. Fucking, uh, you guys know who you are, you fucks. <laughs> I don't know if I should call them out or not. You know, terrible discipline, but they knew real war. And that's so special.
That is fucking amazing. A man who had joined in a time of war, been a part of the warrior culture, preparing for war, and then going to war, experiencing that and coming back home. That's who fucking raised me, the Marine Corps. You know, these dudes had fucking watched everyone blow up. Shit is nuts. One of my squad leaders was this giant of a man. He was like, he's like under six, maybe 5'10", like 225, played college football and could run three mile and 18. He was in the Corangal and uh, one of the dudes got shot on an op or on a patrol and they're at 10,000 feet. There's four guys carrying the casualty on a litter up a mountain to the helicopter. The other three guys carrying the casualty fell out. 10,000 feet, you've already been fighting, you got all your fucking body armor on, you're going uphill now. I don't blame him. Well, my squad leader, he fucking puts the casualty on his back and carries him by himself to the top of the fucking mountain and puts him on the bird. That's who raised me. One of my other squad leaders was in a, a hit in Iraq. They were fighting house to house. They got fucking chewed up by a machine gun as they bust in the house. And then a fucking uh, enemy grenade gets tossed. And his platoon commander hopped on the grenade. That's what I have to fucking live up to as I'm a, a brand new platoon commander. My, uh, my platoon sergeant who was in the invasion, he was in the invasion uh, on a track, getting some RPG hits, gets blown up. He gets fucked up, comes back home. And all he can think about is fucking payback. Works his way back to health, goes right back, not even two years later. To Fallujah. That's the, the, the type of warrior that our core still maintains. My second pump, one of my squad leaders, one of the most gangster dudes I've ever met, one of my best friends in the world, uh, was in Marja with 2-5 Fox. They were sick and tired of uh, waiting for EOD, because their IEDs, Marja was a big fucking minefield. And uh, they were sick and tired of, of marking and bypassing, because they would mark and bypass, and uh, on the way home, on a different patrol or whenever, they would see that the ID that was once in the ground, Taliban dug up and were, of course, reemplacing it on them. So he's like, fuck that. So he starts digging them up himself, which I'm sure all the EOD techs right now are fucking rolling their eyes. And he was successful a few times, and then one time not so successful. <laughs> and got blown up. Blown 20 feet into a river, comes to and wakes up, gives the Taliban the bird. He's bleeding out of his fucking ears. They're calling a bird. He's like, don't fucking call a bird, you pussy. I'll make it home. Finishes the patrol home. <laughs> collapses, gets sent to Germany. And then has to start learning, uh, reading from like a fucking second grade level again. Because his TBI was that bad. Rehabs himself with one thing in mind. I'm getting fucking payback. And that's when I met him when he came to my unit. That's the Marine Corps. Unbelievably fucking special. And the culture embodied the type of warrior that we, we need to breed to continue killing our enemies, to continue murdering them on a mass scale. Another platoon sergeant was 3-5, Phantom Fury. He was fucking online, pushing through the city of Fallujah, destroying everything in their path. You know what he said? This is one of the coolest fucking things in the world right here. You ready for this fucking shit? You ready for this? This is some fucking war shit. I'll tell you right now, any, any soft-hearted motherfuckers, any fucking pussies who are watching, you need to fucking pop out. Pull out of this video right now. Because I'm about to bust some fucking hate on your face. <clears throat> they were fighting street to street house to house, right? And these machine gunners across the street were fucking them up. And it was night. And the Marines are holed up on this side of the street. Fucking Iraqis are on the other side of the street. And it's just like uh, Way City when the Marines got fucked up. Same s scenario. They don't want to cross the street with a whole fucking unit because those machine gunners are going to chew them the fuck up. Like They didn't have tanks. Um at that moment, and I don't know what the other, the air situation was, 
But the situation was dire enough that they said, you know what? If we can't run across that street into that building and find those machine gun nests, let's smoke them out. So he said they lit the fucking cats and dogs on fire and kicked them out into the street to run into the building on the other side and catch the building on fire. That way the fucking Iraqis would have to be forced to run out of a burning building. And then they could just bop, 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 just mow those motherfuckers down. Just fucking one finger high-fiving motherfuckers as he's mowing them down. <laughs> That's the fucking the old school warrior mentality. That's how fucking sick Phantom Fury was. There are no fucking ethics. Even morals are questionable. When you're in real brutal combat. I was so fucking lucky to be surrounded by other officers who embraced the killing, but the officer's version of killing, which is understanding the battlefield and tactics and employment of your weapon systems and your units. Understanding that to maximize the killing. He had this one company commander, uh, he was like an engineer. The dude was brilliant. He's just skinny little nerdy looking guy. All he ever thought about all that ever ran through his mind was how to make my company more effective at mass killing. So when I first flew into our patrol base, PB7171 in uh, Musa Kela, <clears throat> I was fire support team leader. So my job was to, on, on a big scale, maximize the killing. And I'm coming in to learn my job from the outgoing officers. And their captain, who was also the FAC, uh, had this phenomenal system where he was using this blimp that had badass cameras to find IED emplacers and that could track people if anyone attacked the base. The blimp would use the camera and we had, we had, we had two cameras. We had one on the blimp and then we had one on the G-Boss, right? So he's using these cameras and he had this a brilliant system of finding out where the enemy was, getting eyes on them, then calling up higher to get clearance to drop bombs on them. And the dude, I don't remember exactly, at least 20 kills. And uh, it was because he had such a good system to maximize the killing. So we do our, our left seat, right seat, we're doing our turnover and teaches me everything he knows. I'm in the COC and we had a, uh, was a potential ID in placer. We were pretty certain uh, that he, he was putting in an ID. Certain enough that we're, we're calling it in. We're killing him anyways. <laughs> the guy's got, guy's gotta go. And at this point, like I got it. You know, like he, he had trained me well. If uh, higher approved it, dude was going to die. He couldn't leave. As the helicopter that is picking him up to take him back to Camp Leatherneck and then go home. The helicopter is on the deck. The blades are still spinning. The rest of the stick is on the bird waiting for this fucking guy. Because he has to get one more kill before he goes. How fucking beautiful is that? Come on. That's just romantic. He needs just one more kill. <laughs> That's fucking Marine Corps. Every Marine and every MOS and every rank must have this burning desire to kill. Warms my heart. You know what my fucking PTSD comes from? Comes from missing the invasion. From missing Phantom Fury. From not being a part of those battles. Even the Korngal. Ooh. Shit is so fucking gnarly. And that mentality and that mentality right there, that desire to be in those battles that is a part of our warrior culture that makes us so special. In our culture, there is a sense of shame in not going to war. A shame in not uh, getting in the big battles. A shame in not being the main effort 
You know, nobody wants to be supporting effort two. <laughs> You're up on a fucking hill somewhere, missing the fucking the heat of the battle. That that that's that's our culture. It's not enough that you join the Marine Corps, that you're willing to go to war. It's not enough that you join the infantry. You have to be in your battle, on the front line of the fight, getting action, feeling the concussion of blasts to earn respect. That's a warrior culture. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful. Yeah, and yet another thing I love about this Marine Corps is the reason people join it. You, 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 don't, you don't hear people from other branches say, I joined this branch to murder my enemies. You don't say that. You say, I wanted to serve my country. Okay, you know, that's cool. Say, I hear, uh, oh, I wanted a challenge. Fuck you. Fuck your fucking challenge. You want a challenge? I got an idea. This is good for all you enlisted fuckers. Go to college and get an A. Okay? There's a fucking challenge. It's not challenging to join the Marine Corps. You fucking... <laughs> you have to fuck up really bad to get sent home for boot camp. The fucking quickest way to make it through is to graduate on time. That's not a challenge. You don't join the Marine Corps because you want a challenge. You join the Marine Corps because you want to see your enemies murdered by your hand. That is the fucking Marine Corps. It's other fucking bullshit. I want to travel. I wanted the GI Bill. I wanted this, I wanted that. Yeah, I've heard it all. From Marines. It's fucking bullshit. Fucking, you guys get an... Got to knock that shit off fucking quick. You became a Marine because you wanted to see your enemies murdered. Because the thought of being on the front line of a battle, defending your nation or your nation's interests, the thought of being on that front line excites you. But what I want to reinforce is that when you intend to join the Marine Corps, you want to be a part of the killing. Because you could do that job, the finance job or the tech job, the mechanic job in any branch. You choose the Marine Corps because the Marine Corps will put you closer to the front line than anyone else. It will put you closer to the killing. It will make you feel like you're a part of the killing. What makes our culture incredible is that everyone, down to the guy in IPAC, believes he's a part of the fight. You don't see that in other branches. You don't. It is only the Marine Corps that has that burning sense of warrior pride. Even if you're never doing the fighting, you believe that you are a part of it. That's a mindset that is a part of our culture that is incredibly special. It is unique, does not exist in the other branches. So your intention for joining the Marine Corps, I would say is slightly shameful if it wasn't to murder your enemies. We are a warrior culture, a hardcore, die-hard warrior culture. We cannot lose that, but we still have it. And that's why I fucking love the Marine Corps so much. It's a beautiful, special thing. It's a way of life that cannot be replicated. So I hope all of you who haven't thought about why you love the Marine Corps so much. I hope you get a chance to see this and get your love for our Corps rejuvenated because it's a special fucking thing. Happy birthday, killers. We'll see you out there. And oh, and that girl. I was telling the story to, wasn't very responsive after that meeting. So I said, uh, hey, what's up? Something wrong? And she finally texted me back. Oh, yeah, so uh, this is how I imagine she would sound if she were to speak it instead of text it like a fucking coward.
Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you were, like, super cool, but um, I think, like, a little too intense for me. So, uh, good luck with everything. Bye. That's the last I heard of that. So, just thought you'd want to know. Standard.